I'm going to go over electrochemical units and let me apologize for the jackhammer outside of my room. Please try to ignore that. I'm wearing a microphone in hopes that this will help you. Okay, we're going to go over these units and I have to be honest, um, the units, this is starting to move into physics, has always been really super abstract for me. My husband's an electrical engineer, this is his life and he loves it and he gets it. It took me a good five years before I could really wrap my brain around it. So I'm going to talk out units and I'll be honest, sometimes just looking at the units is what saves me as I do some of the electrochemistry, not because I fully understand it, but the units make sense. Um, and I have an analogy for you. And this analogy has helped me take something super, really something really abstract like electricity and try to make it maybe a little more contextual and, and given me a picture. So I'm going to use an example of a river flowing and you'll see me do this as we explain each unit. Okay, so first we have what's called the electrochemical force and it's abbreviated EMF. Um, force, this is what pushes electrons. Um, it's a difference in potential energy per unit charge. And I know that sounds like, oh, so ooey wooey, ooey wooey, but you'll see it. Um, here it is really, it's the force that causes electrons to move. Like the wind blows and it makes leaves move. Um, a car, it has gasoline that's combusted that makes the wheels turn. It's just a force that pushes electrons, okay? Um, and that force, the unit for that is volts. So whenever I use the word potential, I'm talking about voltage. I'm talking about what pushes electrons, okay? Um, and remember, voltage, that's our E, the E naught, the standard reduction potential. Kind of cool. Um, now, I want you to think of a potential like this. We're going to have a river, and you're looking at the top of the mountain where the river is and the bottom of the river, or the bottom of the mountain where the river is. It is that height difference, and you know, you and I know it's going to be the slope, it's going to be gravity. Um, ultimately, all that combined is what pushes that water down uh, the river, pushes the water down the mountain. Um, we don't have to have a pump at the top of the mountain. It's the potential difference, right? Um, potential meaning um, uh, energy of position. Same idea, an energy of position, okay? Um, so voltage is a potential difference. It's the height between the top of the river and the bottom of the river. Now, we have amperes. Um, so sometimes you'll say, well, how many amps is that? Um, they're just talking about amperes. The other abbreviation is A, and it is coulombs per second, all right? Coulombs per second. So before I talk about that, let's say, well, what's coulombs? Coulombs, abbreviated, C, is simply charge, okay? So an amp is charge per second. And remember, charge, that's going to be electrons. What, what has charge and moves? Electrons. In electrochemistry, we rearrange atoms and electrons transfer. So it's electrons moving. First, charge is the electron. And electrons moving, that's what creates current. Here I have it, current, and my husband doesn't like when I say this, current is actually electricity. When electrons move, that's when we go from this chemical um, reaction to an electrical potential where we can get electrical energy. So it's electricity. The official, if I were an electrical engineer, is current. We say when electrons move, it creates a current. So electrons moving is a current. Um, so let's go back to this little river example here. Here's my river. If I took a slice in the river, um, so for you and I, I'd be like, oh, let's count all of the water molecules. Well, this river is going to be a river of electrons, okay? We're going to take a slice. In that slice, how many charges do I have? What are the coulombs? Okay, so in this slice of the river, how many electrons are there? Um, so I have the potential difference. I'm looking at a slice of the river. Now, as that slice, so that amount of charge, as all those electrons begin to move down the river, that's amps, okay? It's going to be the rate at which that charge moves, the rate at which the electrons move. So electrons moving down. And what pushes it again? It's the height of the river. It's the potential difference between the um, anode and the cathode, between what's being reduced and what's being oxidized. The voltage is what pushes those electrons to move. Um, now, putting all of this together, joules, and that's a unit for energy, equals voltage times coulomb. So you're thinking potential times the amount of charge gives you energy. Let me say that again. Potential times, so the potential difference, what pushes, and 
the um, amount of charge, the amount of electrons in essence, gives you energy. Another fact that I want to pull into this is Faraday's constant. If we have one mole of electrons, so 6.022 times 10 to the 23, one mole of electrons, each electron has a charge. The total charge on one mole of electrons is 96,485 coulombs. And you're going to use that when we count electrons. Um, and you can watch that video on counting electrons. Um, so here we have it, electrochemical units. Um, again, it took me years to make sense of this. And it's still kind of um, erythral for me, uh, very, very abstract. Um, but you're thinking potential difference, that's voltage a slice, an amount of charge, that's the amount of electrons, coulombs, and as that charge moves, that's your amperage. Coulombs per second, that's the amperage. Pulling that all together, you can say joules equals volts times coulomb and Faraday's constant. Okay, you have what you need with units. Good luck. If you need more help with uh, electrochemistry, please look at my playlist that says Redox Electrochemistry. Have a fabulous day. Thank you.